Yeah, man, this app won the great supreme. And I just jumped out the porch with Dirty Club Bastards. You did. Yeah, man, this is Pimpin' Ken, Milwaukee's finest, the Royal Highness, the best ever get, got away with it, man. Hey, the best thing since Listerine. I yeah, just jumped man. off the porch with Dirty Club Bastard. You did? Hey, man. Hey, man. Say, man. Say, man. Uncle Ben told me how to whip up the cocaine, busting checks and swiping cars like it's the dope game. Street shit. Yes, sir, yes, sir. We right back at it, y'all. We got the one and only Pimpin' Ken and Supreme jumping off the porch with us today. What's good with it? What's happening, what's happening, man? I'm happy to be here, you know? Yes, sir, yes, sir. I can dig it, man. How y'all brothers feeling? Hey, man, I'm feeling good, especially with Ugly Money and Vado in the back, you know what I'm saying? You know, man, you know, just have a good support team, man. And, you know, to see, you know, the young, young Pimpin' just doing his thing, yeah. man. Just really, it's amazing, man. Yes, sir. You know, it's, his numbers is crazy right yeah. now. Yeah, no, nah, that's what's up, man. That's what's up. And, shit, I mean, Ken, you, you know, you, you ain't new to this, man. You know, you've been off the porch before, you know, Supreme, and, you know what I'm saying, being here. So, you know, yeah. we, we consider y'all, you know, DGB family. You know what hey, I'm saying? Man, so, appreciate that. Man. Yeah, nah, right. for sure. And the first time y'all pulled up, man, y'all brought the whole HHF here. You know right. what I'm saying? Like, really, you know, made a mark. Man, I think y'all might hold the record for the most people that we done had on the porch. <laughs> hey, well, we got 10,000 members here, probably. <laughs> it was this. still more focused in the crowd. You know what I mean? Money, so. money was kind of deep, too, though. Yeah. You know? Yeah, no, nah, for sure. Nietzsche was his game stick too. Yeah, no, nah, absolutely, man. Yeah, shout out Ugly Money, man. Doing doing big things, you know what I'm saying, here in the city and, you know what I mean, just in the media, you know, realm. So much respect, bro. Yes, sir. Uh, so, man, let's let's get to it, bro. Like Supreme. Let's get you know, to it. Um, you got an interesting story, man. You know, yeah. being, you know, a cat who grew up, I mean, your father is, you know, a world renowned pimp. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. What was it like for you growing up, bro? Like with your pops being who he is, man. Mm, you know, really at first, I really ain't really know like what was going on. You know, I'm just looking like, man, this my pops. You feel me? Yeah. Like shit, I'm going with pops. We gonna have a good time. It's going down, you know. But I mean, if you're looking for like my first introduction on who my me knowing like, okay, Pimpy Ken is my pops. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Man, we was, uh, <laughs> we was, uh, I was about four, five years old, right? And, uh, Pops come get me, come get me in the blue bin, like five S500 or something back then. Picked me up, he like, shit, you finna ride with me to Chicago, you know, don't tell nobody, it is us. Man, we ride to Chicago, as soon as we get there, a white bitch come. Black Benz, TVs inside that motherfucker. She handed the keys like a movie, like, uh, huh, we switch out. I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck is going on around here? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm like, Pops, I, you know, I ain't really see a lot of white people there. I'm 28 from Burla, you know what right, I'm saying? So right. I'm like, what the fuck is this? You know what I'm saying? And shit, from said, there. Who is this white woman? I'm like, from there, I'm like, okay, I got an interesting father, you know what I mean? And yeah. then really going back to the hood and motherfuckers. Chopping it up and saying different shit like, oh, Pippa Ken, your daddy, or this going, what's going on, or whoa, 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 you yeah. know what I mean? So, nah, for sure. And I mean, being from Milwaukee, like, and, and your pops being, I mean, not only, you know, is Ken who he was, you know, around the country, but then in Milwaukee, like, he was so polarized. And so I know that you had to, like, just see stuff and hear stuff and be like, damn, like, what is, you know? Motherfucker tried to kidnap me, man. Like, that, uh, you know, like, and you know, pops definitely was like, Godfather around that motherfucker. Yeah. On top of that, I stay on 28th and Burlap. So Pops come and pick me up. New Maserati with the S550, I mean SL55 in the back. You yeah. know, a white bitch, somebody driving, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, motherfuckers like, who, what the fuck they got going on at that house over there? You know what I mean? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, motherfucker tried to kidnap me, man. A, a, a lady, uh, a couple houses down, came on my mama and was like, uh, uh, where around town? They talking about, uh, they, go, they trying to do something to your son and woo, woo, woo. Uh, just be on the lookout type shit. Yeah. My mama like, you know, stay your ass in the house. Don't go outside, don't do it out. Me being me, I was bad in the motherfucker. I still stick it out the back window. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Still try to go outside and, um, man, I would end up going outside one day. And I'm walking to the alley. You know, I'm walking, we got alleys to block the alley. Yeah. I'm walking, I get close to the alley. I see a nigga with some braids, dark skin nigga. He like, hey. Come here. I'm like, the fuck? Fuck me, come here. You know what I'm saying? Like, they what? 
I mean, he just started coming, started chasing me. On oh, what? Man, I get up out of there. Ugh. I'm running. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I gotta get the fuck up out of here. I gotta get home. So uh, he didn't catch me, but uh, motherfucker knew who he was, and I told him, you know, I told motherfuckers and shit. You know how shit go in the city. Yeah, nah, for sure. Now, Ken, um, in the beginning, like, did you try to, did you try to, like, you know, keep that lifestyle, like, away from your kids? Did you try to, you know what I'm saying, shelter them a little more? Or, like, what was your view on that? Everybody except for him. Hmm. And the only reason why I introduced him to the game was because his mama was in the game and I was in the game. You know what I'm saying? It ain't like my other kids' mama, but, you know, you know, this is your son. So, you know, I mean, right. you know how to go, right? And I know that he was going to run into some pitfalls and some shit, street shit eventually. So I would ride him around, introduce him to all the pimps, all the hoes. But my first hoe when he was, uh, but not my first hoe, when he was one, about a month old, one month mm -hmm. old, I met Nicky's, we in Atlanta, right? Cause he, yeah. we, I had him down in Atlanta when he was a kid. Like we, I was with him a lot. So bitch walked right up to the car, straight up out of Nicky's and gave him a hundred dollar bill. He said, I'm going to give him his first shoes and things, right? Oh, so I took the dollar, I said, I took the hundred dollar, I said, I'm going to go spend this. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I said, thanks, bitch. Hey, you know what I'm saying? You know. Yeah, yeah, bitch, ain't no nation like a donation. Oh, bitch, oh, bitch hey. donated, right? Well, nice. But, uh, you know, I, I would take him all around the country, you know, when school was out, I would come get him and I would tell him, don't tell his brothers and his sisters because, you know, they was on some other lifestyle shit, you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. his sister, his older sister, I had her when I was just getting out of jail. So yeah. I was still, you know, you know, I went all the way Pippin Ken, yet a yeah. Ken Ivy, so to speak. But you know, I was trying to, you know, just I didn't want to shield him or protect him. I wanted him to get a dose of the game. I used to always tell him when he was like twelve, I said, nigga, I'm talking to you like you're twenty five. Hmm. Even though you're twelve, because you're gonna sure, eventually be a twenty five year old man. Right. That's you know what I'm right. saying? That's how I used to tell him. I said, Yeah, nigga, I ain't, I ain't gonna gag out goo you, you know what I mean? So I was right. kinda, you know, just straight straight laced with him. So you know, he's seen it all. He's seen holes upon holes and, you know, he's seen the, the phantoms. He didn't been in the phantoms and the, he, he used to get my jewelry and put my jewelry up. You go on Instagram, you see he got all my jewelry. He used to be in the mirror yeah. and the crazy thing. Like, I kind of fucked him up. The nigga text me one day. He said, yeah, dad, I know exactly what I want to be. I think the nigga going to say, a doctor, a lawyer. He said, I want to be a pimp. I said, I'm going to beat your motherfucking ass, nigga. <laughs> but, though, to piggyback up what you're saying, though, I feel like Pops just really grabbed me a little more because he knew my environment, you know what I'm saying, the shit that's going on. Motherfuckers know, if motherfuckers know if I'm Milwaukee, 27 Burlock, 28 from Burlock, Taliban, niggas know how that Absolutely. shit go around that motherfucker, you yeah. see me? So on top of that, everybody know who Pops is. So motherfuckers might be saying crazy shit to me, you know what I mean, your Pops ain't shit, or, yo, or motherfuckers might be saying good shit, you know what I mean? Yeah. It go both ways, but at the same time, like I said, I feel like Pops, you know, he grabbed me a little more so he could prepare me for that environment, you know what I mean? Because yeah. he knew what, like, what a motherfucker was facing, you feel me? Yeah, nah, so, for sure. And it was, and that was, you know, that was crazy all the time, you know, going on the road with Pops, though, and his, his bitches with us, you know what I mean? Four, five bitches with us, lapped up, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. we in Tunica, we in motherfucking Arkansas, we in Texas, like, yeah, we, yeah. we moving, you know what I mean? And, like he's saying, it ain't no Google Gaga shit going on, you feel me? Yeah. It's like some real smashing going on, you feel word, me? Word, word. So, motherfucker definitely got it from the horse's mouth. Word. So, let's tap more into your story, too. You coming up, man. Like, you grew up on 20, you said 28 from Burlock? 28 from right, Burlock. I'm 22nd in Townsend. So, oh, yeah, that, that's right, right up the man. block, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, you right over there by the Chicago subs, yeah, right you know there, what I'm saying? Chicago subs. Yeah, yeah our side, avenue right, right over there. You know what I'm saying? I think it's kill me, man. Yeah, yeah. Nah, for sure. The so, blue star on locusts. Yeah, like, no, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah so for yeah. folks that don't know, like, man, like, it ain't no joke over there. Like, that's yeah, straight man. war zone, like, no, sure. you know what I'm saying, no play. Sure. Um, what kind of kid was you coming up, though, bro? Like, what was you into? I was really into everything. Like, I, I liked to, to play basketball, skate, I skateboard. I used to do a lot of different shit. I wanted to do yeah. everything, like, football. I was into everything when it came to that, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. video games, shit like that. Um, I ain't really start getting into no, you know, no bullshit till I start getting into high school and, you know, realizing how much flavor a motherfucker really got. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, I could rap circles around these niggas, you know what yeah. I'm saying? So that's when I just, you know, jumped into a little different line. No, I can dig it. Uh, when would you say you jumped off the porch? I'd say like, like, like 17, 18. Okay, word, word. You know what I'm saying? I, got, I came down to Atlanta. I been was doing a little hustling before I came down to Atlanta and Milwaukee and shit. Yeah. But uh, I ended up coming down here 
and was hustling and going to school. I came down here for college, but uh, you know, I didn't want to be calling pops and shit all the time, you right. feel me? Right, right. So I ended up coming up on a little quarter pound of weed and shit like that. Was uh, Had a little good two, three week run, wasn't even, wasn't even doing what I was supposed to be doing. Yeah. And um, got caught by the dean of the school and the shit like that. They uh -huh. kicked me right out, right? But uh, after that, I'm like, shit, I gotta go hard. Motherfucker, like, you going back to Milwaukee, what you gonna do? Like, you gonna turn around? I'm like, man, hell no. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I ended up, uh, I ended up moving with some other people, family of mine, on uh, what that is, my high tower court, like Bankhead, right across the street from Doug, Doug High School and shit. Yeah. So I'm hustling and shit. I ended up getting indicted on 50 pounds, you mm. know what I'm saying? And shit. That was crazy, you know what I mean? I ain't even tell Pops about the shit till I beat the case. Oh, wow. I was so, I ain't wasn't scared, but I just was like, he gonna be disappointed because he used to always tell me, you know, he know what's going on with me, yeah. you know what I mean? He like, man, you, you you hustling, you doing all this shit, you know what come with it, you know what I mean? Right, right. So, uh, yeah, man, I, I did that little shit, was fighting that case for like two years and uh, came out on top of that, so, you know? Yeah, nah, nah, that's, that's what's up, man. I mean, you know, it sounded like you was really, you know, you want to be your own man and didn't want to have to depend on, Hell you yeah. know, pops, even though you're knowing that. Pops for shit, man. But, hey. Even though I can, if I want to, you know what I mean? I, it ain't no problem. Yeah. But I'm just shit, I'm a man, you know what I'm saying? But, that's but, what he told but, me but to Pippa, be. I said, nigga, you had 50 pounds, you could have gave me 25, bro. Come on, right. Nigga, I could, nigga that, we could have kept, I could work this shit. <laughs> <laughs> nigga, this young nigga got 50 pounds, AKs and shit. I'm like, God damn, nigga, yeah. I mean, what the fuck? And then I was really upset. Cause I, didn't, I thought he just quit school. I didn't know he got caught with a quarter pound yeah. until he told me like about a week ago. Yeah. I was like, damn, I mean, this is a, but you know, he grounds a motherfucker now. So a lot of that shit was just like shocking to me. But you know, you don't know your kids, right? You right. know what I'm saying? I mean, your kids ain't you. They got their own lifestyle. That's one right, thing I right. like about Supreme and little Kenny, my oldest son, they do their own thing. You know what I'm saying? I mean, he ain't trying to be me. You know, he doing them. Yeah. So Supreme, was there ever a point when you was coming up like where like, like, did you ever try to tap into the ism? Like, was you, you know what I mean? Like, at a young age, like, did you try to, did, sure. did you try to get you a little stable? Did you have you some hoes? Like, what, what was you on? You know, uh, past tense, everything past tense. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> for sure, but for I, sure, for sure, absolutely. But, uh, I definitely, you know, had to set one for sure. You yeah. know what I mean? And it's in my blood, so naturally, you know what I mean? I'm like, damn. I'm having my way with these with these females, you know what I'm saying? They yeah. the baddest ones. Anybody know me from the city, they know every time they see me, I had the, the baddest one. You yeah. Know? Yeah. So like, shit, you know, motherfucker dip, dip and dive, you know what I mean? Yeah. And keeping the culture alive. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Nah, <laughs> Straight up. I can dig it. And Ken, like when you found out that he, you know what I'm saying, like even had like his first his first hoe, like how did that make you feel? You know what I mean? Like, he called what? me, told me, he said, yeah, man, you ain't doing it like your P, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, man, I'm KP, man. I'm keeping the pivot. You know what yeah. I'm saying? He's he popping at me and shit. And I'm laughing. I sent I said, the video, matter of fact. I remember I recorded the video. I'm like, hey, man, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. got what? You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, he, he was trying to say that, you know, he, he woo woo woo. I told him, I said, yeah, okay, man. When you get when you when you get 16 deep, holla at me. You know what, uh, what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? One deep, man. One hole is too close to no hole, and broke hole is no hole. You know what I'm saying? That's the answer. What you said? You know what I'm saying? Call me when you get deep, man. I'm talking about deep in the ocean too, man, because it's slow motion like that bottom of the ocean. Word. You did. Nah, I can dig it. I can dig it. So, so but, I, but but uh, as the question, I wasn't proud that he was doing what he was doing, but you know what I'm saying? I knew from raising him as a child, that this shit was gonna encounter him. That's why I had him around me all the time, so yeah. he wouldn't be confused. Mm. You know, he'd have his own flavor, you know, his own thing. That's one sure. thing about Supreme, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, Supreme might get a bitch, man, 30 years old, 40 years old, and yeah. break the bitch for 40 bands. This nigga be getting like 40, 50 Bad bands teams. out of bitches. That, I mean, not no pimping on, yeah. some, on some other shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just bitches like him, they just give him money. You know, be old bitches and shit. I be like, man, that bitch old enough to be your mama, homie. What's up? Uh. Like, oh, Pop, I got this. Next thing I know, he got man. new new Porsche. What's the other car? You got the Genesis. Genesis he just right. bought all this new shit, man. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, yeah. shit, he must know what he's doing. Condo, P Street. He built on P Street before I did. Yeah, nah, that's yeah. ill. That's ill. And man, when you was coming up, Supreme, like. Was Pops giving you like expensive clothing and like was you, did you have, you know what I mean? Was you yeah, like one yeah. of them young cats with yays on? Yeah, and, like, yeah. I, I was lazy. I had to fly shit, you know what I'm saying? Like literally yeah. robbing jeans, 
my fucking rock revivals, all the fly shit. You yeah. feel me? Like, but Pops definitely went, it wasn't just like, oh yeah, we buying you fly shit. Like, possibly take me on the road with him. Mm -hmm. I might have to hold the bag. He might tell me, you know, go, go tell that nigga over there, you pimp a kid, son. Uh, just the DVD, woo, 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 you know what I'm saying? Hey, I'll go over there, hey man, this, I'm Pippa King's son, this the best of both worlds. They like Pippa King's, he right over there, you know what I'm yeah. saying? <laughs> he look, look, you know what I'm saying? Like, motherfucker, oh, let's go out that kid. Like, so I was really like with Pops grinding, like, so he really instilled hustle with me, although he, I had to fly shit though. Yeah. But the crazy thing for about sure. that is that the, the shit the nigga was asking for, man, I was like, what the fuck? Uh, <laughs> nigga said some Robert G's, man, we went to Miami and the G's called, what they called, five? They're about 550 and the hat was about 250. So I'm just huh. like $700. <laughs> now, you know, <laughs> as, you know, as a player, right? A boss player, you know, having money, you know what I'm saying? I, I want to do it because it's my sub. Yeah. But on another end, I'm saying, damn, how many of these motherfuckers he going to want? So, you know, Supreme didn't just want no Robert G's. He wanted everything you know what i'm saying he was a fly little dude man he's been fly all his life man you know and you know we hustled together you know what i'm saying i made him you know get down with me and i showed him like you know cause i know he couldn't actually sell a dvd yeah but he would let my know hey that's my pops mm. you know what i'm saying but the nigga just man he was just he would just get the most expensive shit, man yeah. I, I, I used to actually i said where the fuck you learn about some robin g <laughs> you talking about how old was you like 14. Yeah, I was just graduating from uh, like the eighth grade or some shit like that. But yeah. that was when like I think uh, who the fuck Chief Keith was hot as a motherfucker. Yeah, and he had on the, uh, he had a picture with the red Robin jeans on. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna kill their ass for graduation. I'm getting them. You yeah. know what I'm saying? The yeah. red was, man. I popped. Out. I'm like, man, pops, I need I need them red Robin jeans. Like, I need them. Like, <laughs> he like, you Have need them. I need them right there. You're yeah. straight up. So, nah, man. I've yeah. been doing fly shit even for my graduation, though. My eighth grade, I had a party bus, fly shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. man, they came outside like, is that the singer's bus? Like, no, that's a that's Kenneth Ivey's bus. Ha. Huh. <laughs> so, 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 so Pops KD, it was bad at you, man. You grew up with expensive taste. Yeah, yeah. No, always but, but, but I, they never hear tell you. They always got a thousand or better for Christmas. I, and I got seven of them motherfuckers. Eight, was it nine? About, it's a bunch of them. But, but I got about all, I, every, every Christmas, every birthday, every school, back to school, I had to give them all the same thing. Yeah. So yeah. I had to hustle hard like a motherfucker. So, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't that they was just, you know, you know I was giving to them. Then they was good kids, you yeah. know what I'm saying? I mean, even though Supreme grew up in the hood, he was still a good dude, you know what I'm saying? He was very mindable. You can see how smooth he was. He was always like that since he was a baby. His own brother and sister was like, he just like, he'll be just like you when he grew up, you know, because he was so smooth and laid back. Yeah. He seen so much fly shit, you know, by the time he was fucking seven years old, he'd been damn near every state, hmm. you know what I'm saying? Because me and his mama, you know, we hit a lot of states together. Then, you know, me and his mama went together no more. I went to get him. I took him everywhere I went, you know, everywhere, yeah. New York, California, Vegas. Ain't no way you could say that man ain't bad. He been sure. everywhere. Yeah, for sure. Word, word. And Supreme, like, at what age did you um, understand, like, even the dynamic of, like, what your mom, you know, did at one point and, and, and understand that? Uh, I would think I was in, like, the fifth or sixth grade. No, I think I was just trying to, like, flex. Like, yeah, my pops a pimp, pimp a kid, whoa, whoa, whoa. And some girl, some girl was like, well, what that mean your mama is? Fuck, fuck you talking about, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> shut the fuck up, you know yeah. what I'm saying? But then, um, you know, my mama, my mama used to be gone for like two, three weeks at a time. And then my pops would be gone too for a couple months, you know what I'm saying? And I'd be at my grandparents' house and they selling dope like a motherfucker. There's a lot of shit going on there too, you know what I'm mm. saying? If you know about 21st and Hopkins, you know what be going, you know. Bro, that's a hop, days. skip, and a jump away from my house. You, hear, you see what I'm saying? So <laughs> that's back the in them back days, alley. <laughs> my Uncle B, Pico, and them, so back in them days, so, and um, I used to just hear motherfuckers say little shit, you know what I mean, about my mama, you know what I'm saying? And, yeah. Uh, it affected me a little bit when I, I used to get mad and shit, like, what the fuck, you know what I'm saying? But shit, as I grew older, you know, I just like shit. This is this who I am. This was this is where I came from. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. This the life I know. You know what I mean? Yeah. Product and of shit, the guy. I love my parents. Ain't no. I don't wish I never had no different parents. None of that shit. Like my dad, a superhero in my eyes. Yeah. Yeah. So, that's how I look at it. And that's why I had him around hoes when he was young because I know that. But he seen the benefit of hoeing. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, he seen me check thirty thousand out of one bitch. You know what I'm saying? All them hoes took care of him. 
You know what I'm saying? Sure. You know, I ain't gonna say no name, but he know who I'm about to talk about. Sure. She broke him off every day. I, mm. I used to be like, hold on, wait a minute. You know what I'm saying? Hey, sure. I'm your pimp, not him. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but she was, you know, giving him like taking me boot shoppers, money, taking him shopping. shopping. Yeah, and, uh, even shit. the white girl, I can't say her name, but she was crazy about it. You know mm. what I'm saying? She would go in and buy him all kind of shit. You know what I'm saying? I mean, they yeah. would hide money for me to, to go give it to him. And wow. I was like, you know. This nigga they really cut into my trap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Supreme, you ever you ever find yourself in a situation where a woman tried to come and give you some money because of who your pops was on the tip of wanting to try to get in your stable? Or if you even didn't didn't even have one, but somebody like said, I want you to be my P, you know what I'm saying? You know, It's a situation I ain't gonna go too deep into it, but uh, I definitely had a whole choose, you know, just off the fact that a motherfucker was, you know, yeah, and, and they they probably knew him before they knew me, or you know what I mean, or seen him before they seen me, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So, right, nah, you no, know. yeah, nah, that, that's that's crazy, cause <laughs> I mean, it's almost like it, it, it just fall right into your lap type shit, like just cause of you know what I'm saying, like who you are and you know exactly. what I mean, who you connected to and all that. For sure. Yeah. Um, when did you find uh, that you had a passion for music? I always had a passion for music. I've been rapping. It's, I got videos of me rapping when I'm 12, 13 in Huntsville and shit. I got CDs when I'm like five, six years old rapping, seeing little shit on there. You feel me? Yeah. So I've been had a passion for this shit since forever, right. since I can remember. You know what I'm saying? Now your pops manage, you know, who a lot of us revere as, you know, one of our favorite, you know, rappers, Pimp C. For sure. Um, did you ever get a chance to meet Pimp? Hell yeah, that's my uncle. Like, Word. man, we had to we play basketball together too. Me Word. and his sons kick it, playing the game. She come get it, come to the house and this Bentley and, sh to, and shit, you know what I'm saying? And ride and we just kicked it. Like, we always kicked it. Like, yeah. that's my uncle for real. Like, Word. he had me in his wheel. Like, you feel me? Yeah, yeah. So, Nah, that's what's that up, man. And would you did, did that like even seeing your pops moving around like with these different artists? And I don't know if you were too young to even know like how he was being featured on so many artists' uh, uh, albums, like on their skits and stuff like that. Pastor Troy, Lone, like all these different cats. You know what I'm saying? Um, did that kind of influence you to want to like step into the music? Hell yeah, cause. Uh... I we he always be needing to go to the studio and shit too, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. So we always be at some studio in some different city too, you know, when you doing the intros and shit. So I be there for most of them intros, you feel me? So I should be like, man, I want to get on there and say something. I want to rap, you know what I mean? And my first time actually going to the studio was with uh, the row. Ice uh, cream yeah. paint job. Yeah. And uh, we was in Dallas and Pops was like, you want to so go to the studio, don't you? I'm like, yeah. He like, well, write a rap. Write a rap by 6 o'clock. I'm like, what? He like, man, you better write some cold shit. You finna go meet so-and-so. Mm -hmm. I'm like, man, all right. So shit, I wrote some. I go in there. We rapping. He get on the song with me. Like, that was my first time going to the studio. No, actually, you did something when you were seven. I still got the CD. I'm saying like a real studio. You know what I'm saying? Really writing a song. Oh. That was when I was just young, just saying yeah. some shit. My yeah. first time writing a song. song yeah. Make, you know what I mean? The role, yeah. yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. Or, and, and that was like when you like really took it serious? Or? Yeah, for sure. Okay. From there, we was at every studio. Every time we hit a different city, we was at a studio. It's a lot of footage of shit on YouTube. Yeah. Motherfucker, look it up. But, uh, we going to every studio. You want to go to Studio Hub? We had all these, you know what I mean? Yeah. Huntsville, Atlanta. We kicking it, like. Right. And who's some of your influences when it comes to the music? Like, who you fuck with? Jay-Z, mm. for sure. Uh, Wayne. I'm a big Wayne fan. Mm -hmm. Pimp. Bun. Just UGK. We're going to put both of them in there. Yeah. Um, I listen to so much shit, I ain't gonna lie. Futures, I got, I fuck, you know, I fuck with a lot of young niggas too, little yeah. babies, I fuck with all the young niggas too, you know what I'm saying? Right. So like, I listen to everybody and I kinda like, you know, dib and dab and make my sauce what it is, you know, yeah. from in my inspiration. Nah, I can dig it, man. So what's some of your goals when it comes to the music? Like, what, like, is the music like really your, like, like really your passion? Or are you sure. just doing it, you know what I'm saying, just, sure. just to fuck around with it? It's definitely my passion, okay. I ain't gonna lie, you know what I'm saying? 
And my goal is to really be a mogul with the shit, you know what I mean? Like, be an artist and have fun with the shit, but make sure my business took care of it too. Yeah. You know what I mean? And have other outside avenues to bring in different revenue, you know what I mean? So, yeah. like, I'm trying to go as far as I can and really set a platform for other motherfuckers like me, you yeah. feel me? Because, like, even like, like what Pop's saying, like, Pop stayed in the birds, right? I stayed on 28th Street. Pops come get me, I'm going out there kicking it with them and shit like that, you feel me? And um, they'd be like, you ghetto. Some, not them, but you know, motherfuckers around the, the, the neighborhood, they don't really, they ain't seeing motherfuckers from Milwaukee and Menominee Falls, gotcha. you feel me? Yeah. So I'd be like, what the fuck? But then I'd go to 28th Street and motherfuckers would be like, you a little too proper, like nigga, you know a little something. Like you skate, you skateboard, like nigga, what yeah. type of nigga is you, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. So it'd be like, damn, I ain't never really like, Know where to, you know, yeah, know where to go fit with in, the shit, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. that's when I'm like, okay, I got, I want to do something like my music, you know what I mean? I got to express myself somewhere, you know yeah, what I mean? For sure. And then me get, getting older to get back to the point where I'm trying to make is, um, it got to be other motherfuckers like me, you know what I'm saying? Who got flavor like me, who, who come from this shit or come from something, yeah. you know, and go through something similar, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know, that's what I'm really here to bring light to. Right, nah, you know I can mean? dig it. And growing up, did you deal with a lot of jealousy and stuff like that, whether it be from friends, family members, you know, stuff like hell that? Hell yeah, hell yeah, for yeah. sure. Like, like a motherfucker, like, motherfuckers I love, motherfuckers I was really looking forward to be like, Oh, I, okay, I see you, you know what I'm saying? I see you doing your thing. And they give a motherfucker the cold shoulder, like, damn, like, yeah. love. Like, I, I thought she was gonna show me some love. Yeah. You feel me? Man, but you know what, man? Cats, uh, you know, it's interesting, man, because like how you was just talking about, like, you know, being, being, being in the burbs and you, you too hood for them, you know what I'm saying? Man. Being in the hood with your partners, but then it's like, damn, like you, too bougie. Yeah, you too bougie. You know what I'm saying? Man. It's like, man, you, you can never win with that shit. That's why you got to, like, and that's from early, I, learn how to move by the beat of your own drum. And that's why I found myself being to myself a lot. You yeah. know what I'm saying? When I came to Atlanta, I was dolo. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't nobody, no real motherfuckers. I could be like, okay, I can go really be with them, and they going to take care of a motherfucker. You feel me? Yeah. And I wasn't looking forward to calling my pops or calling Miles for nothing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They already had their shit going on. And, whatever they life is, you feel me? Yeah. So like, I always find myself being to myself, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. For sure. Nah, I, can my I can dig it. Nah, you good, you good. Now, Ken, HHF, y'all celebrating y'all third uh, year anniversary. Yes, sir. Yeah, man. HLD tonight. That's what's up, that's what's up. Like, can you talk about, you know, the hip hop fraternity and, and, and what it is? And I mean, it just, you know, I've seen you since, since the inception of it, you know, like talking about it and I've seen the members, you know, growing so much. Can you talk about like just the impact that it's been having? Well, you know, initially, it was philanthropic, right? My whole objective was to do something for the young kids mm. in the city, right? But every time I would put my effort and my time, you know, with these people, you know, they self-sabotage. Mm -hmm. Everybody say they want to get to 100, right? Mm -hmm. But they get to 99 and then they self-destruct. Then they, because they, they got a comfortability, they more, their comfort zone is at 95, 94, 93. They never want to excel to the next level. Yeah. You know, so, uh, the first event that really sparked my interest was I went to Ugly Money Summit, right? Mm -hmm. And Ugly Money let me sell DVDs. And I seen all these people at the Ugly Money Summit. It was just so beautiful, all these young people rapping. And that gave me the inspiration to keep going. Mm -hmm. But you know, every time I would try to uh, put a rapper out there, you know, I had him on Off the Porch, you know, I had him on uh, Big Facts, I had him on Drink Champs, I had rappers everywhere. Yeah. They were always self-destruct, and then me and him had a pack. You know, Supreme is real, he's a real cold-hearted player. You understand what he said? Dad, I don't want to be no motherfucking nepotism. I don't want you mm -hmm. to show me no special interest, right? Show that. You know what I'm saying? He said, he said, do what you got to do, Pops. Yeah. And it hurt me because I wanted to, you know, that's my son. I wanted to put him out there. But he refused to be, you know, a special treatment. Mm -hmm. So after all that shit went through, he gave me that phone call. You know, he going to give me a call. Yeah, pop told you, you understand what I'm saying? You know, everybody ain't built like us. Everybody mm. ain't got this DNA. Yeah, he said, sure. Pops, when you, what you wanna do? Yeah. And then, you know, I was so happy to see Supreme come 
you know, and, and he was in California doing his thing, and he was in Houston doing his thing. I'm glad to see him come back to Atlanta and help us with the hip hop fraternity. So the hip hop fraternity is all about uh, politics. We're about media. You know, we're about business. So we got our own clothing line. We got our own magazine. We got our own radio station. We got our own social media. And we got platinum artists. You know, it would be Supreme, Ditto, uh, uh, Baby Mob. We got, uh, 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 man, who else? Baby Mob. Uh, a lot of motherfuckers. It's a lot of them, man. I yeah. can't even think of all of them, but it's a bunch of them. Oh, yeah, uh, Trill Wheel, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, and, th and this is my main man. He's been, this, he's the COO. He was the fourth member to join the hip hop fraternity. Okay, right. Yeah, so now we got James Gray, who's our national president and our national spokesperson. So James Gray used to be with Al Sharpton, he was Al Sharpton's vice president. Mm. We was able to pull him all away from Al Sharpton and bring him over to the hip hop fraternity. Yeah. You know, we got Dr. Bay, you know what I'm saying? We got Mallory, who's the CEO here in Atlanta. So we got 35 chapters. Mm. So since the last time I seen you, we didn't got like, I think it was two chapters. We got 33 more chapters. Yeah. We got over hundred executives. You know, we got uh, 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 10,000 members. You know, uh, we working with the White House with sister, uh, 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 her name is uh, uh, Casaberry Hernandez. Mm. You know, uh, HHF is working with the White House. We got to stop the violence to our brother James Gray. So we, you know, we working directly. And uh, Ice T going to be on Power 88 okay. in about a week. He's going to be on there with the Vice President. You know, and this all under the auspices of Hip Hop Fraternity. Yeah. You know, we also have uh, uh, Congressman Jamal Bowen uh, over in New York. He took our, our legislation over there to the uh, to the, to the Congress, and he filed uh, a, a pension. A, 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 a bill, you know, where we try to get pensions for hip hop, you know, for people in the hip hop. Yeah. Well, so we're doing a lot of political stuff. We got a HHF day in uh, Kentucky. We got an HHF mm -hmm. day in uh, Columbus. Yeah. You know, Vegas. Through, and, and now, now we ain't got a day there. We're talking about a day. Oh, okay, you know, okay, so okay. so now we working. I'm working with a, a couple of the uh, political uh, people here, the council men and councilwomen here, to get an HHF day here. You know, but we got to get a proclamation from the mayor. So we waiting. Mm -hmm. You know, to assemble that. So, you know, you know, we, we philanthropic, we political, you know, because James is a politician, yeah. you know. So naturally he got we got the political action committee, HHL political action committee. We also uh, you know, we teach people about, you know, the business side of business, cryptology, uh, ASCAP, BMI, you know, uh, Artificial, artificial intelligence, yeah. AI, AI. See, that's what I really you know, like about yeah. like the whole like HHF is that like it's a true organization for artists, creatives, you know what I'm saying, within like the culture to be able to connect with each other, find out about, you know what I'm saying, like a network, find out about what's happening. Oh, yeah. going Shout out to, to our attorney too, uh, Tiffany Sims, uh, right. Simmons Law. If y'all get in trouble, she's, she, she, she look off for HHF. Yeah. You know, so we got lawyers, we got all that shit, bro. We got you know, I mean, we partner with Ugly Money. You know what I'm saying? We, you know, Ugly Money tell you, man, we, we don't push him away. We extend the hand. He extend yeah. the hand back. You know, uh, we got the master grip. You understand yes, what I'm sir. saying? Some powerful shit going on. And, you know, I like Ugly Money because he's not, he's not an envious, jealous brother. Mm. You know what I'm saying? He never once said, man, you know what I'm saying? He was always embracing us. You know, he came to all the HHF yeah. meetings and you know, he'll bring his whole team, you know, uh, you know, Hey, don't, don't take this wrong. You, you know, Jizzle is my favorite. You know what I'm saying? I love <laughs> Jizzle. And, and, I, and I love China Renee, too. You know what I'm saying? And, and Yellow, that's my guy. Uh, Moody, all of them. I love the whole HHF, Bizzle. All, I love the whole uh, uh, Ugly Money well. team. You know what I'm saying? I mean, and Votto, man, he's just cool, man. It's my, it's my right hand, man. I, I want him to say a few things. Say something, man. You act like you light skinned back there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, my name is Votto. Take care, DJ Votto. You know what I'm saying? I'm the uh, national CEO of Hip Hop Fraternity. You know what I'm saying? Speak up a little bit. I can't hear you. Uh, also, I'm the uh, CEO of Hip Hop Fraternity Africa. Oh, okay. You know That's what what's saying? up. Um, I'm also a filmmaker. I'm a media guru. I've, I've got probably like 1,500 music videos out there. You know, I got a couple movies, a couple of YouTube series and stuff. You know? And, you know, at your chef, man, you know. You're yeah, talking about the Boosie movie? That's oh, what's yeah, up, man. Y'all taking it global. We got the Boosie movie, you know, we just wrapped that thing up, you know what I'm saying, ready for, ready to be sent to the distributor, you know, it's everywhere, you know, right. look for it you know, on Tubi, Amazon Prime, all the platform where, you know, films uh, are distributed. No, nah, that's what's up. And hey, you help me with the money. Say one thing, because uh, he, he had the Tuesday thing. Uh, 
on Tuesday and, and he was watching Supreme perform. He really liked that. Say I ain't going to hear him much on the mic, but hey. Speak up. He speak loud. <laughs> hey, man, I do a whole lot of things, but right now I'm here with HHF and Pippi Kid and Preem, and that's how we rock him. Yes, sir. If I rock with him, you should rock with him, I'll push the button on your bitch ass. Believe that, nigga. <laughs> and that's it. Believe that, nigga. Believe no, that, Jack. Man. Yo, but bro gave me the perfect segue to, uh, talk about Boosie because um, you helped Boosie get his book deal right. uh, to release that book. Uh, was it Cross the Tracks? It was Cross the Track. I yeah. also helped Ice-T and uh, I, I got a lot of people book deals. I'm working yeah. on some other famous people. And what happened was, you know, uh, I got a partner named Steve-O. So Steve-O yeah, Steve was wow. instrumental. Shout he's my Steve partner. So he's yeah. a, he instrumental in, in, in us doing with the, with the James over there with the rap snack the Cologne, you know, uh, Forte International, Pixie Paolo, who I was just on the phone with the other day. So, you know, what we do, me and Steve, is we create equity partnerships. So we show artists how to get into the equity side of doing business with corporations, you know, because that's where the most money at. If you do an endorsement, hey, okay, throw you a couple of dollars. You do a, uh, you know, product integration, yeah, okay. But if you got if you got equity in the company, as the company propel and it scales to the next level, you as an artist also get to participate in that growth. And that's what we do, you know what I mean? Even yeah. with the book, you know, we did it from the hip hop fraternity literary agency, me and James Gray, C.B. Gray, you know, who was our national president, you know, he was the one, you know, that's, he got the relationship with the chancellors and all the schools. So he said, man, we gotta do the hip hop fraternity literary agency. Mm. So we got philanthropy, you know what I'm saying? What I call financial philanthropy, where we get the publishing companies, the big publishing companies in the world to come to us, give us the money, we give the money to the artists, then the artists do the book and then we disperse the book to the children okay. and this is how we encourage them to read. The same thing we're doing with uh, the White House right now, we create a situation where we can uh, show them that we, we got uh, 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 James working with a uh, 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 street, street corner resources where you know when somebody gets shot, they right there, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? I mean, they, they, they neutralize the situation. So we try to bring that across, to, that's as big in New York, we were trying to bring across the, across the nation, and you know what I'm saying. That's how you know we we tied up with Boosie and we tied up with all these celebrities because we want them to understand that they are the gateway and that they are powerful and they are influenced and that our young people love them and we got to show them how to reciprocate and take their love to the next level and work with people like Supreme, work with people like our children, and you know I will get you the money. That's what I want. Boosie wanted the money. I got him a six-figure deal. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I, he signed that check. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Then we did the documentary, so we take them to the next, next level. So we filmed the entire project, and people could see Boosie sitting down with the author, the co-author, and they could actually see what's going on. They mm -hmm. could see Boosie, you know, tell his life story in bits and pieces, you know, but you got to get the book to see the whole thing. But you can see bits and pieces. You can see the people that's around Boosie. You can see his entourage. You can see his clique. And that's another way to sell the book. We sell the book through Tubi, through Amazon, mm. through Netflix. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's just, that's what I do. I bring the level of game. Now, niggas think the game is always on the damn. No, game, I mean, think about it, man. Just think about it. How many niggas you know, let's be real, let's be serious, that went to HBO and, and got six-figure deals out, out of them at 31. Come on. I was 31 when Not I did that. Nah. You know, and made them end the movie with me. Yeah. And made them put me in the credits. Talk, sir. Come you on. You know what I mean? This is at 31. Yeah. So now I'm 60, what you think I'm doing now? Huh. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm giving dudes all kind of deals. You know what I'm saying? We got to deal with Homestead. You know what I mean? We just signed a contract two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's what I do, man. I take people like Supreme, like Boosie, like Ice-T, and I introduce them to corporate America because I have that gift that God gave me. I got the gift of understanding, and I got the gift of wisdom, and I have a lot of wisdom when it comes to dealing with people, you know, yeah. with money. Yeah, that's what's up Because I had you. a lot of money, too. I've been a millionaire three, four times. So yeah. money don't, like when I'm sitting in them rooms and them rooms, uh, I don't get confused when they say a million or two million. That shit don't bother me. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I mean, money, it ain't about the money. Because yeah. money, actually, a billion ain't nothing but, uh, but decimals on the computer screen. Right. It's not actual money. Nobody got actual billion dollars. Mm -hmm. So you, you, it's dope because you've empowered so many people, put people in these different positions, you know, to be able to win and helping cats find like different avenues, you know, to make money in this. And I, and then that, like, I even tie that back to just the hip hop fraternity and kind of, you know, what you're, not kind of, what you're doing with the hip hop fraternity, with like showing these artists like different avenues, different ways to make money. And that's, and that's why we hooked up with Baby Ma, K 
Kalo in 17, mm. and Pujat from Mississippi. Because we, and Gino, who's the CEO of Vicksburg, we hooked up with them so we can show the world that we're not just concentrating on Milwaukee, we're not just concentrating on everybody there. Right. If we come together, you got one pencil uh, speed, you can break that motherfucker in one lock. You get 100 pencils, it's gonna be hard to break that right. pencil. So we wanna replicate ourselves around the world. And that's why we're working with 17, and 17, he said something very interesting, you know, because you brought up Pimp C with him early. 17 would verify this story. If you ever have him on here, he'll yeah. verify this story. He literally, was there when I sent Pimp C 10 boxes of, of DVDs. Hmm. And Pimp C said, where's the money? I said, no, you're going to sell DVDs. Hmm. And Pimp C's like, man, Ken on some bullshit, man. I want some money, man. <laughs> and I was like, no, man, you know what I'm saying? Pimp, this is, and then Pimp started selling DVDs. We talked about the Ugly Money Show. Yeah. He was selling out the trunk, and then it came up to Pimp C. He said, man, you Pimp C, why are you selling fucking DVDs and, and fucking shirts? Out? And Pimp yeah. said, bitch ass nigga, I got two sides if you want it, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, inspiring them, just not on, just on the level of, of, of the business, but also saying, look, Pimp C, you don't be, if you ain't humble, you'll crumble. Your, yeah. your, your worst of ego is your amigo. Your worst amigo is your ego. Oh, so man. Pimp selling tapes out the trunk. You know, uh, uh, his Leo selling tapes, uh, 17, all of them selling tapes out the trunk. A yeah. uh, bankroll, IVP, all these was part of the UG Clay, U UGK clique that, you know, me and Pimp talked about and we helped form. So yeah, you know what I'm saying? I inspire more than just, you know, giving them deals. You right. know, I teach them about their family. Yeah. You know, I teach them about, you know, a lot of shit. Yeah, nah, super important, man. Uh, Supreme, what would you say is one of the biggest life lessons that you've learned? You out know? of this period out of life? Or yeah, from, man, because I mean, you, you, you've seen a lot, you know what I mean? You've, you know, gotten game from, you know what I mean, people from different perspectives and all that. Like, what would you say, you know what I'm saying, is like one of the biggest life lessons that you learned that helped you to maneuver and shit, you know, stay on point? My biggest life lesson that I would say I learned is don't deal and don't dwell. Hmm. So if it's some bullshit, I ain't dealing with it. Yeah. If it was some bullshit that I got past and it, and it happened, I ain't finna keep dwelling on that shit because this is gonna keep pulling me back. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that, I, I would say like shit, just I ain't dealing and I ain't dwelling. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And shit, keep going too though. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. like I said, I done been through a lot of shit that, like just outside of just being me, outside of my pops, being my pops, you yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah. Living my life, you know what I'm saying? Being supreme, Right. you feel me? So, like, motherfucker gotta keep going. You can't give up on this shit. You gotta keep going on that journey. The day you turn around, oh, I'm finna go sit down and do this for a little bit, and you know what I mean? Like, that's when this shit gonna crumble. Like, keep going, right. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, nah, no, I can dig so, it, I can dig it. Um, on the music tip, what you got coming up? I saw you drop the video like two, like a week or two ago. I dropped that uh, Supreme No Worries, and then I just dropped that Supreme uh, In The Mix yeah. about, a month, about a month before that. But uh, I got a project coming in about two weeks, you know? And um, I, uh, I, I don't know if I'm gonna put the name right now, you know what I'm saying? Okay. So. Uh, but just know, just check out my Instagram at one the great supreme. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna give y'all a little couple hints, and you know what I mean. I'm gonna upload the cover with the name and everything on there, so motherfuckers can see what's going on with this shit. Okay, where, where? Uh, any features or anything that you can, anything that you can, you know, share with us? Uh, this one ain't got no features. Okay, that's it's just up. all me. I just wanna, I wanna give a motherfucker me. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I, I want a motherfucker that. to, you know, see my personality, see how I'm feeling. And I'm telling real stories, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, uh, I write, you know what I mean? I write my music sometimes. Sometimes it takes me three months to really, like, that no worries I just dropped. Yeah. It took me about three months to really just, every day just, you know what I'm saying, get something, get yeah. something. Word. But sometimes I do go in the studio and I might freestyle something and okay. shit just A1, you know what I mean? Just about to ask you, do you punch in? Hell yeah, yeah, I punch in all the time. I make a lot of my songs punching in, you know what I mean? But I notice when I do that, it don't be a lot of content, so, you know what I mean? I, I might, I'm talking about what I'm talking about, but I might say some shit that I said on the last song, not knowing, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. so it get repetitive a little bit, you feel me? Yeah. So when a motherfucker sit down and be like, okay, I remember, let me tell this story right here. You know what I mean? I got this story, I remember this right here, let me tell this story exactly like this, yeah. you know what I mean? And I might freestyle this shit as I'm writing, but I'm like, okay, uh, let me write that. Uh, da, 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 yeah. da, 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 write that, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. so. Yeah. Nah, I can dig it. 
Ken, do you ever uh, do you ever think like if you if you if you could go back in time, would you ever like would you take anything back on like you know exposing uh, you know your kids too much to the game or anything like that or? Well, you know, like I said, man, you know, uh, Supreme was special. You know what I'm saying as far as the game is concerned. You know, his mama, you know what I'm saying, didn't wear number of minks and diamonds and had the, you know his mama had brand new whip. So you know, what I mean, he he. he on, on our side, just us two, his mm -hmm. mom and me, I knew that was a lot. You know what I'm saying? I knew that he was going to encounter the shit that he said, niggas trying to kidnap him. Niggas, you know what I'm saying? Me, you know, hating on his pops, hating on him. You know, I'm coming to get him in 200, not $100,000 car, $200 car, 200, two, two, I had the car, yeah. with the, with the, with the car to pro or whatever the fuck, I don't know. The Maserati. I, I know I call it Maserati, but, but this is the one before they made the cheap ones. Okay. These yeah. the ones they made in Italy, not the American version. So I had the, with the red seats. Then, you know what I'm saying, uh, I had the motherfucking SL55 with 200 on the dash. You know what I'm saying? These are just the cars I would come pick him up in. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Then you know, it might be the Phantom, it might be the other exactly. Benz, the other Benz. I had so many Benz, I don't even remember that shit. Yeah. But, that knew that let me know that this nigga was gonna have some problems. Yeah, sure. So you understand, but if you go to my daughter, my oldest daughter, uh, Kanisha, she got a master's degree. You know what I'm saying? My other kids got degrees. You know, his brother, you know what I'm saying, me is acting out there in uh, LA okay, yeah. on, in that movie, All American. That's his brother, his oh, real okay. brother. They played the Netflix the series. Oh, Netflix, right. and, and his brother is also finna get off into, uh, what, what just that uh, film shit, directing. Mm. They are gonna do my movie, him and his brother. They gonna okay. do my movie, they gonna do my biopic. So, you sure. know, and I had to explain it to uh, look, Big Kenny, cause, uh, well, I'm Big Kenny, he Lil Kenny, I don't know, so many, all of our names, Kenny. Yeah. You know what I'm saying, it's three Kennys, right? Three <laughs> Kenny Ivies, all in one household. So I told Kenny a Johnny, you know, that's the African name I gave him. So I told Kenny a Johnny, I said, listen, man, I said, I know you thought I was showing favoritism towards your brother because he was with me all the time. I said, no, I said, he lived in the hood and we lived in the suburbs, you know what I'm saying? So y'all had a different upbringing, even though he was in the suburbs a lot, you know what I'm saying? I, mean, I know he had to go back to 28. Now I can't tell his mama where to live, right. you know what I'm saying? I, mean, I couldn't tell his mama, hey, this ain't a safe environment to me. You know what I'm saying? Me, because when when he was uh, I don't know about seven, eight, his brother got shot in the head. Mm -hmm. so and you, shout out my stepfather Jeff, man. Rest in peace. Jeff, man. yeah, his stepfather. Yeah, because he taught me a lot too how to wow. be a man. You know what I'm saying? So both yeah. of them. Yeah. Know, so when so his brother got shot, I'm like, what the fuck? That's rain. So when his brother got shot, I'm like, what the fuck? You know what I'm saying? Me. So now you know I'm really worried about the shit. You know, I mean, I, like he said, I'm I'm a boss in the city. You know what I mean? You know, I'm East Side nigga, so yeah. it's like this. You know what I'm saying? If I do this, the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, <laughs> and the Marines coming at you. I ain't. <laughs> I'm talking about the ghetto ones, though. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So it was no problem. Even that nigga on some kidnapping shit. That nigga, you know what I'm saying? You know, I, I I didn't I didn't really find out because you know his mama. You know she know how I was. She was kind of like you know kind of dancing around and shit. Yeah. But Supreme told me about it. But you know it turned out all right. But uh. Right. Yeah, you know, I don't have no regrets, pimp. You know, I, I mean, man, who 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 who, want, who don't want to be pimping Ken, man? I had all the fun, man. Yeah, I've been over forty million records, man. I worked with Fifty Cent, Nelly, uh, 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 Flip, Pimp C, Bum B, uh, Big Daddy K, Ice T, uh, Mac Ten. You know what I'm saying? The list too short. Yeah. You know, me too short. Pastor Detroit, You know, Little John. I mean, come on, man. Who don't want to be Pippi Kim? I've been at the BET Awards, the first BET Awards. That's me on stage with all cast dancing and fucking around and yeah. shit. MTV Awards, the Grammys, you know, the, the Emmys. You know, I mean, you know, about multiple mansions. You know, I had, I had, we had my six cars in the, in, 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 in the park, and I, and I, whatever, what they call it, shit, the front yard. Man, one of them under 100,000. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Millions of dollars for jury, man. You know, I don't despise the time I did in prison. When I was in prison, I was a part of Moore Science Temple. I was a Mo Islam, all my Mo brothers out there. I was a Mo, and uh, I ran that. I was I was 22 years old. I was the uh, I was the uh, the grand sheep with no homo shit, with no punk shit. I ran the penitentiary niggas out there. Might not be, some of them might be dead, but I ran the joint. You know what I'm saying? I mean, then before that, I was robbing and stealing, getting a lot of money. You know what I'm saying? And thanks to my boy JD, he showed me how to get millions and. And thousands or whatever you want to call it, we was thousandaires and shit. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Not millionaires, but thousandaires. And then, you know, I got my first shot of pussy at seven. Mm. So you know what I'm saying? I've been I've been blessed all my life, man. 
I, 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 I forgot the baby. I'm sorry about that. I see your girl over there. Oh my God. Oh, I'm sorry, man. I, I see your uh -huh. baby. I, I, yeah, I apologize for all the mothers, you know, for being so foul mouthed. But, you know, uh, I, you know, I did. Said <laughs> throw me off. I do. I do not regret nothing. You know. Yeah. Look at my son, man. Fly guy, man. Yeah. All my kids fly, man. None of my kids is fucked up. None of them. Yeah. They all doing well. Yeah. I can't. I can't. I can't complain, man. Yeah. You nah, know. That's what's up. I can't yeah. complain. Yeah. Nah, that's what's I would up. not change that one thing. Cause, yeah. uh, nah, live with no regrets. That's how we supposed that's to do that. it. You know what I mean? Um, you got any shout outs you want to give before we get out of here? Yeah, man. Shout out to uh, all of the ones that hold it down here in the ATL. I want to shout out to my man Reality, who got my chapter in, uh, in uh, Miami. Shout out to my man D. Shea, who got the chapter, the CEO of uh, Nashville. Shout out to Montana from Memphis and uh, Brother Frank Bay down there in Arkansas. Shout out to uh, Rico, the plug in Minnesota. Shout out to my man DJ 16. Shout out to my man uh, that in Milwaukee holding chapter. Two. Shout out to my man uh, Zai the Shadow down there in uh, Columbus, Ohio. You know what I'm saying? He running the chapter down there. Shout out to uh, Dr. Bay. She got the chapter in LA. Shout out to my man James Gray and Dr. Phil. They running the chapters in New York. Uh, man, help me out, Vado. Shit. A lot of just shout out to whole H H M. Malory, shout out to Mallory, Angel, and Jazzy. Yeah, so. You know, say that from Say That Podcast. And shout out to you. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Ugly Money for uh, putting me on his podcast. I'm now uh, a co-host on his podcast, Trigger. I got Lake. shout outs too, man. No, I, I, let me finish mine. You got, you, you, hold on, chill. I, I got, cause these people. Get I got shout, uh, shout out to Shout out to Baby Ma, shout out to Tim Will, shout out to Murder Man, shout out to uh, H2O, <laughs> shout out to uh, Dutch, shout out to all those people that started with us, Marvin Ivy, start, shout out to Jessica, shout out to, uh, so Candy, uh, everybody that started with the Hip Hop Fraternity, shout out to all of y'all. You know what I'm saying? If I forgot y'all, shout out to, to y'all that I forgot. You know, um, uh, uh, Big Mal, uh, man, Vado, you ain't helping y'all. No help. Let me do my shout outs, man. <laughs> shout out to HHF, the whole HHF. You know what I'm saying? Like Pops was basically the whole HHF. Man, shout out Milwaukee, man. Shout out 2 a shout out Taliban. Really? You know what I'm saying? Rest in peace, Jeff. Rest in peace, Zeke, R.P. Duty, you know, you know, free all the guys, the real ones, you know, free Uncle B, you know, you know, so shit. Shout out Dirty Glove Bastards off the porch and Ugly Money is going down, man. Hey, Believe shout that. out to Player Puncho, one of the original members. Of and the shout out my son, family. too, man. Yeah, my grandbaby. Uh, Supreme, And shout out to man. all Peter my grandbabies. Shout out to all yeah. all y'all. Shout Young out to my Claire. mama. Shout out to my guy, J.D. You know what I'm saying? It'll take two hours more than that. <laughs> shout out to Vado. Shout out to Hip Hop Attorney. Go to the Hip Hop Shout out to everybody, man. You know shout out to yeah, everybody, everybody we love, man. Everybody we show love. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to remember. Yeah. That's all you I love. know what I'm saying? Shout out to everybody. Appreciate y'all boys pulling up, know. man. Jumping off the porch with us. Show that. Hey, man. Shout out to Milwaukee, man. Hey, follow Yo, me shout at, out Milwaukee, at Real Pimp Ken underscore. Also, go get my book, The 48 Laws of Game, Pimpology. You know what I'm saying? It's a classic. And the other book, The Art of Human Chess. And y'all make sure y'all go support my son that uh, the one. No, at, at one, one the great, great supreme. You great know supreme. what I'm saying? Yeah. At one the great and supreme. And go to Ugly Money Nietzsche and, and uh, support in, him at, at, at Vado Films and, and uh, Dirty per, dirty Off the Porch. Yeah. Yes, that pussy it been tapping with, that's how the hoe came. Bitch, you know who you fucking with? I ain't no lame. Unc Ben told me how to whip.